It's the end of the day with Ray. Hello, my friends. Well, you can see on my Sharp Interactive board, I got Greg Van Walker, and Greg Van De Walker is the Senior Vice President of Collaborates, a master service provider, which is wholly owned by Great America. Greg, it's always great having you on as we as we want to talk about IT services, and you're kind of my go-to person here. And, and when we look at our friends in the Document Imaging Channel getting bombarded from OEMs that you know want to become master service providers to the master service providers that are out there, it seems like there's so many new options. But I know that Collaborus has been in this space for 12 years now. You understand the copier dealers better than any other master service provider out there. And I'm going to say even the OEMs. The OEMs might understand their print deliverable. But as far as I'm concerned, they improved a whole lot to me on the IT side as far as integrating that into the print side. So how are you doing? And give me some updates. Well, Ray, thanks again for having me. I always enjoy coming on and, and chatting IT with you or what, you know, whatever the topic of the day is. So this is uh, fun to be here. Uh, how are things going? Actually, very well. Uh, Collaborance finished up its first quarter, mm -hmm. uh, and it was by far the best quarter we've ever had. And there's a lot of things contributing to that, and it's not just necessarily year over year. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of companies show good numbers today because of, you know, some of the things that happened with COVID last year, but we, we are really at record pace. And so um, a lot of it has to do with we continue to uh, modify our offering. Mm -hmm. um, you know, security is still very, very top of mind for a lot of people, and we're doing very well there. Um, and just fine tuning the offering. You know, we, we make it easier for people to consume what we do. And, and so that's been a big part of it as well, Ray. So, uh, yeah, a lot, lot of good things happening. Well, Greg, you know, my experience with Great America and Collaborance when I was with my buddy Milton at ImageQuest out of Nashville, you know, what one thing that, that was always stood out, you know, back then I didn't know it because I didn't really understand the space. I was learning along with Milton, I would say, at that time. But as, as I started to grow in the space and learn about the other master service providers and stuff, the one thing about Great America is you can really clearly define the deliverable. You know, I talk to some of my friends that are talking to some of these OEMs and they can't even define what they're going to be delivering. They don't even understand what it's going to cost or what they're going to be delivering. And it's kind of like, oh no, just leave it up to us. So they want to build this kind of a lead based platform, which, you know, why in the world would anybody want to do that? So, you know, kudos to, to collaborators on that front because I think you've done a really good job with that. I mean, is it still on your website? I should have looked before I got on this interview with you, but are you still, can you show us your website real quick? I'm gonna just throw that out there because pro it's probably still there, but, and, and just kind of show the dealers out there what the deliverable is that you can help them deliver to their end user. Sure, and Ray, I appreciate you saying that. I mean, sure, we have been around for 12 years, but I can tell you uh, where we're at today uh, compared to uh, where we were at when we were working with you and Milton. Uh, it's a very different organization with a very different offering. Uh, there's a lot of reasons for that too, but uh, again, security is so critical. That has been a big focus of ours for the last three years, really. Uh, and, and so I would like to share some of the offering with you because if, if you're in the copier space today and you're not in IT, you really have to good, have a good handle on what is the market like today? What does the typical MSP down the street have to offer? Mm -hmm. And Ray, that's very different today than when you guys were competing early on. Sure. And, and so um, I'll uh, share my screen here. Um, and this is all on the, the, the Collaborance website. There's a website there. Yep, it is. So this is you know, Flavorage.com. And uh, one of the things that uh, we do is we take a very transparent approach. If you go to our website, uh, you will find, as I'll show you here, we put our pricing right on the website. Uh, so that's just, if you want to kind of dig in to know um, how we price and, and what things cost, you can, you know, look away and uh, reach out to us if you have any questions. But Interesting. to answer your question, what what is the offering like? You can see we really have three buckets here. We have the typical MSP offering, mm -hmm. and, and those are some of the things that you were consuming, Ray, a number of years ago and that we're really good at and that we've perfected. And I'll scroll down and you can kind of see, you know, when it comes to managed services, what are the things that if you're a copier dealer, just out of the gate, you have to be able to have these things as part of your offering. 
And, you know, Ray, you can see there's a lot of X's that you have to have just for the managed service offering. Now, scrolling back up, and like I said, a lot of the things that we've been working on the past three years are right here, the security bundle. And so you can see some of the things listed there. These are the must-haves, and these are some of the recommended that we have. And then, obviously, if you want all of that, the far right pricing is where we're at. So this is the price that Collaborance would offer to you, and then you're obviously marking that up to an appropriate price on the brief and making that margin. And, you know, Ray, what I'll tell you from a pricing perspective, if you're looking at that MSP offering where it's, you know, $55 to $75 out cost to you for those services, you need to be selling that for $150, $175. Absolutely. If you look on the MSP offering, you know, that's you're going to be in the $225 to $300 range per piece. Again, there's a lot of moving parts there, but that's really the kind of price that you need to be going to the brief with. I'm going to stop sharing that. People can go to the website and check that out if they want more details. And, again, there's a lot of other things on there that would be very helpful to them. Well, you know, Greg, here's the reality. I'll guarantee you that if our friends in the documentary channels, these dealers, called up whoever they think they're going to do business with from a master service provider perspective, it would take probably five days for them to get what you just gave the whole world on your website. That's a fact. I mean, we've all, I'm telling you, because I've been to the websites. So, you, you know, I've yeah. been to the websites and I've talked to the dealers that have, that have talked to some of these folks. And, and, you know, this is a big problem out there. And it's a big problem, I think, with, with the, with executing IT services effectively and profitably. Right. Most of these folks don't even, can't even describe the deliverable. They don't know what yeah. all the key components of the deliverable are, and they sure as hell don't right. know how to price it. And you know what, you always hear these arguments, you probably hear them too, well, what are we paying sales reps? You know what, okay, first of all, let's define the deliverable. Let's define what the deliverable costs. Let's define who the, you know, the right customers that you're gonna go sell it to. And, and part of that business process, will define how we're gonna pay our reps. And it's just mind boggling. You know, I did notice a long time ago on your website, and I, I think it's still there actually, where you guys, you know, your, your sweet spot with an MSP, not necessarily a copier dealer, but that's, a, that's an MSP that does about $500,000 in revenue a year with, with MRR. Um, is, are you, did you change that or are you still looking? Is that still your sweet spot? I wouldn't call it the sweet spot, Ray. I would say that's kind of like the entry point. Okay. That's kind of the bottom. That's fair. Um, certainly, there's some acceptance to that. But you know, if if you have half a million, that's about forty thousand dollars a month in MRR. Mm-hmm. You know, so you you're going to have a handful of customers. You're you're delivering, you know, some good services, but you're at a tipping point there where you're going to have to start hiring some more people. You, you potentially are going to have to have managerial layers, and, and those, those are good opportunities for us to have discussions on how do you want to go about scaling your business. There's a lot of people who decide, I'm just going to do it myself and hire. Great. Many others come to us and say, you know what, I'm going to focus on my sales, on delivery, on projects. Certainly, I have to have some tech for on-site and for troubleshooting, but I'm really going to leverage that to collaborants, let them take care of, you know, 95% of the tickets and just give me the ones that are critical or give me the ones as the, as the, the dealer that I need to physically go on site to do something with. And, and so, you know, Ray, again, to your point, understanding the deliverables is, is certainly important but not just understanding it, but can you deliver it at a high quality? Yeah, you're right. And, and that is, that's where we're getting people coming to us because, as you know, IT is a tough business. And doing it well is, is hard. And then doing it well and managing your bottom line is even harder. And, and so we are a real viable option for others who, who just want to focus on growing top line, scaling fast, and managing headcount. Whether you're a copier dealer who has an IT business or an MSP, uh, we're seeing a nice flow of leads from, from you know, both channels. 
Well, I know, you know, when you all started this thing about 12 years ago, it was really focused in that print channel sector, and you've moved pretty far past that at this point in time. I mean, you're, so, you know, you, how many, how many IT services companies do you have compared to like the copier companies? Have they outnumbered them? Uh, we're getting the 50, 50. Okay. So it's been a, a, you know, a nice growth for us from a copier perspective in the copier channel. We are actually seeing a lot of people coming back to us who maybe used us early on back when you were Ray, okay. uh, they took his house and they're coming back to us. Mm -hmm. And, and so what you have today, Ray, is there's a number of copier dealers who, who do have an IT practice and they're forced with the same question to answer that the MSC does. Mm -hmm. Why do I want to grow this? Do I really want to do it all myself or do I need to start strategically partnering? And those discussions are happening more and more often in both channels. Well, let me ask you, if I'm a, let's say I'm a, I'm a copier dealer, or a friend, I guess it doesn't matter. I'm an IT service provider and I'm using another master service provider, you know, it, what, what's the process and when should I start engaging somebody else such as you if my plan is to exit from that other master service provider? And then if I do elect to exit from, from another master service provider, what kind of time frames involved in that? And, you know, what, what should a dealer start preparing for now? Because, you know, we've seen a lot of shake up in the master service provider space. You know, my friends that are tying themselves to some OEMs and the OEMs get sold one day or something changes. I mean, I, I just think that if you're with another master service provider, it doesn't hurt to start questioning the fact, you know, maybe I need to move and how's that move look? Can you share a little bit of insight on that? I can. It depends who you're first with because uh, some of them have uh, contractual relationships where it's really hard to untangle today if there's nine months left on a contract. Uh, but what we do is we start having the discussions now, knowing when that cutover date is going to be. We do a lot of prep work, identify migration plans, who's going to be the first five, who's the next ten. So we can do a lot of the work ahead of time. There are others where, you know, we had one uh, just this week. You know, they can flip the switch and it's going to take about three days mm -hmm. for us to get their customers over on our platform. So it, it, it just depends. Mm -hmm. But the time is you know, the best time is now to make any decision, right, Ray? And wh whether you can't execute on that for another 12 months, and, and we do have people like that, by the way, where they're stuck in a contract, it's like, okay, but here's what we can do now to make sure we are prepared uh, for when that day comes. I don't know if you would ever do this, but I'm just thinking because you guys are part of that great America family, there's a lot of, you know, opportunity for, from our dealer friends from a leasing perspective and hardware, not only in the print side, but in the IT side. If I was with another master service provider and I had some time left on my contract, is there any, would you guys work out any kind of programs to maybe help me out of that? Because I would hate for a dealer to sit there and think to themselves, man, I got four months left on this thing and my, my hands are tied. But if there was a way that maybe they could get some help with that, I'm, I'm, I guess I'm asking you all, would you help someone get out of a contract if they moved to you? We have done that, right? Okay. We have. So, well, um, you know, obviously if we're, it'd be pretty tough to buy out of a two-year contract, but if we have a, a handful of months left, there's absolutely some things that we can do uh, to help make that transition uh, a little bit less painful. Well, I just wanted to bring that up because a lot of times people just think that there's no option. Well, there always is an option. But more importantly, Greg, I just think it's good for people to talk to other players in the space. You know, we, we this is a fluid business. We have so many things going on around us. You know, the OEMs themselves are, you know, I, I've been sharing some of their financials. None of these people are knocking out of the park. And so I, I just think that we all have to pay attention to, to what could be. And then, you know, how do we prepare for that? Because we want to do the right thing for our end users. It's all about the end users that we service. Are you going to have any more classes coming up? I know you guys used to do a lot of classes for the dealers to come to. Do you have any of those on, on, bike, on, the, on the books? Well, we actually do. We have another one of our uh, sales uh, seminars coming up. Uh, you're putting me on the spot. I forget the exact date. I believe it's in se September. We've done that for, wow, I want to say maybe five years. Okay. And it, it really is a holistic sales method from just mm -hmm. the prospecting to the first call, what do you do on the first appointment, assessment, all the way to closing the deal. So it's, it's two days. It's intense. Uh, but it's very, very helpful uh, to all the partners.
we have customers repeat they come back a number of times uh, new hires so it's, it's really a solid training that we've been very happy with for a number of years well i might crash the next one be ready so <laughs> you're always welcome to attend we'll we'll, we'll let you slip but, in and uh and, and listen up right we'd be happy to have you you know greg the reality of it is I, we just want to make sure I, i've been hearing the same stories from from the document Navy channel for a long long time and you know they're all trying to get into IT, and I hear some horror stories out there just from the way people talk to these folks about it. You know, we got some consultants out there that are way too optimistic. They're, they're you know they're, they're spreading just craziness to these people, and and I think that you know we need to be able to surround ourselves with people that have done it. And you know, and I said in the beginning, you know, I haven't agreed with everything Collaborance has done. I mean, I don't. It's hard to get me to agree with a lot of things. But but the but the bottom line is, you know, I did experience the deliverable, and that was twelve almost. Well, it was about twelve years ago, ten years ago. Yeah. So a lot has changed in our industry since then. So yeah. I wish you the best of luck. I'm going to look forward to uh, to seeing you in September. And I know, are you guys going to the BTA? Uh, we are definitely having some team members out there, so I know you're going to be out there, yeah. Ray. So uh, I know uh, our teammates will be uh, very excited to see you, and I hope everybody has a great time there. Unfortunately, I personally won't be there. Uh, but uh, it's great to get everybody back together again. And, you know, hopefully uh, discussions like this are, are going to be happening in, in some of the breakout sessions or just uh, around a dinner or cocktail uh, on just how is the copier channel going to not just be in the business, but thrive and be profitable and, and drive the IT side of their business. Uh, it's time for that to happen, and, and again, hopefully the BTA event can spark some ideas to, to really help uh, copier dealer owners uh, get their head around this, to, to take it seriously, and to really put time and effort and energy and resources into just making it an outstanding practice. That's for sure, because we got to do a lot of things to change the way we're going, because we can't go back to 1990. Greg, it's always great having you on, because we know this, status quo is the killer. Ball, it'll be invented. Don't get stuck in status quo, and I'll see you all tomorrow.